All right, so let's get started on uh, on the neck. So the neck gets narrower towards the top of the instrument, and then down here, it's sort of got this, um, not quite a diamond, but uh, sort of a peak tip here at the bottom, and then it gets smoother as it transitions into the underside of the neck. And so this is a, you know, a reasonably complicated shape, but not, not too difficult to make. Uh, so let's do that. And while we're at it, we're also gonna make the material for this. So to help with this, I've made a, uh, a neck outline. I just quickly drew this in, in Photoshop. Uh, it's just an outline image and I've added in use, using the images as planes add on the same way that we did with, uh, with the, other, the other reference images for the project. And then I just dragged it in here and placed it in the center uh, underneath the fretboard here and scaled it appropriate, uh, appropriately. And actually it looks like, looks like I do need to scale it up just slightly more, maybe, maybe, eh, but we'll figure that out as we go. Um, Sorry, right, let's get started making, making the actual neck. Now you may be tempted to think uh, that the, the edge flow for this object should go something like this. Like you might think that this would be a good grid pattern for this. And so when you, you know, make your, make your loop cuts, uh, you know, that it'll go sort of like this. Uh, and this part here at the front is fine. Uh, but what's not fine is, is the edge flow down here in this corner, because that's going to give us problems when we, when we try to subdivide this mesh in order to make it smoother and, and looking a lot better. Uh, so in order to do this properly, actually what we're going to do is we're going to do it like this, uh, and then we'll have a pole up here, and that will essentially be uh, the dividing point where the, uh, the edge flow sort of, sort of diverges here. And so we will have edge flow going this way, but then we will also have edge flow going straight this way and straight this way uh, at this corner to allow us to give this a nice a nice sharp corner and avoid any kind of rounding when we when we subdivide it so the way that we're going to do that is and actually let me hide this guitar for a minute so we've just got the neck outline visible and we're going to go shift a mesh plane to add a plane and scale it down and RX 90 to rotate it 90 degrees in the X axis. And then we're gonna give this some profile. So control R, control R to add loop cuts vertically and horizontally. And then this vert here at the top, I'm gonna to just bring up, let's turn off that proportional editing. These I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide down and scale them inwards in the X. And then I'm gonna actually delete all of these verts here at the bottom. So what we've got is sort of a, um, you know, not quite a pyramid, but a little bit, a little bit rounded. So we've got just these five, these five verts here, and then I will bring this up, and this is going to form the heel. So we'll put that here, and just scale it down and position it at the bottom of this reference image here, and then we will extrude in Y, and. Oops, rotate it so that it's vertical, and then extrude in Y, and then I'm gonna grab these in the Z axis, and maybe bring them a little, little further back. And I'm working in X-ray mode so that whenever I'm grabbing one of these verts here on this, this side, I'm grabbing everything in the back. And then we're just gonna keep doing this. So extrude in Y, and then just grab these top three and move them up. And so you can see that we're creating this, this edge flow that's going around here like this, but then we're also gonna have edge flow straight in this direction and straight uh, in this direction, which is, which is what we want. So extrude in Y and bring this up in the Z axis like this, and maybe bring these over a little further, just like that. There we go. And then I'm going to extrude these one more time all the way across like this. And then for these, I'm going to go S, Z, zero, and that's gonna make them all the same height in the in the z-axis, and then I'm going to bring this 
oops, I'm going to bring this one vert here, just GY to drag it out in the Y axis a little bit. And then I'll just use, use the uh, uh, side view here to reposition these by sliding over in, in Y and SY zero to line these up and just drag these over like that. And we can sort of try and even up this mesh a little bit, a little bit like this. And one thing you'll notice when looking at this reference image uh, is that guitar necks are actually not straight. So this is angled very slightly back and that's fine. It's not gonna, it's not gonna give us any, any problems with, uh, with our mesh. But if you wanted to make it simpler so that you didn't have to worry about the angles, uh, you could just you could just build this straight and then it would be fine and most people probably wouldn't notice. All right, so let's add a subsurf modifier to this. And then I'm gonna add, oops. Yeah, I'm gonna add a loop cut here at the bottom and then E, E to straighten it. Uh, e, F, there we go. Oh, sorry, before I do that, I forgot that we need to fill in this face here on this side and this face here on this side, like so. And fill in this here just so that we have nice quad based topology. I will just subdivide this edge here uh, so that this Oops, delete faces. So that this could be a nice quad based mesh on this side as well. There we go. And we'll do the same thing here along the bottom. So I'll join these and these, and then And actually, in case you didn't know that you can do this, uh, one neat thing is if you have, you know, if you've made a face here on the bottom and you're in edge select mode and you select one of these edges, uh, if you just keep tapping F, it will fill in all the successive faces all the way to the end. Right. So now I need to subdivide this so that this can be a face and this can be a face. And then I'll just knife tool all the way to the end here like that. And there we go. So now we can add a loop cut here and E to just straighten that out. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on this edge as well to straighten this out. And then at this end here, we'll put one to sharpen up this edge because we also want this to have that sort of sharpened, sharpened peak shape and just shade this smooth. All right, so now we have that nice transition, but one thing that we don't have is that nice sort of uh, tapering heel at the bottom because this heel should be, uh, should be a little bit more narrow than, than the rest of this. So I'm gonna, Go into top view here and select the pieces that will become the neck. And then I'm going to turn on proportional edit and set it to smooth and go SX to scale this in the X axis. And I'm actually going to bring back the instrument here just so I can get a sense of scale. Bring back our guitar here because we want this to be the same width as the fretboard essentially here at the bottom, right? So I can and go into top view here and maybe scale down this piece a little bit. And then this end here, just going to scale it up a little, a little bit like that. There we go. And we can do some, some more cleanup of this in a little bit, but that's, that's getting pretty close to, 
to what we want. The only other thing I think I will do is just grab these and just bring them up a little bit just so that this is a little a little bit sharper maybe here at the top. There we go. All right, so now, um, and you'll notice it's, it's getting a little smaller because of the subsurf, but that's fine. We'll deal with this just by scaling it a little bit here. And the same thing with, oops, same thing with the rest of this. Just bring it up like this. There we go. And now for the rest of this neck here. So this neck is going to get a curved profile because the subsurf is rounding it essentially. So it's it's got a pretty simple shape here currently, and that's fine. Uh, one thing that I will do is just actually turn the subsurf off for now, and I'm actually just going to dissolve this back edge, and we'll add it in. We'll add it in later, and we'll keep this. We'll keep this a little more blocky for the moment, just while we work. All right, so now I'm just gonna get this positioned and extrude in Z, and just position it where it should go. And edge slide these to try and try and keep this fairly rounded. That's looking all right. Can maybe bring those in a little more. These ones too, just a little bit. And then we're just going to extrude this all the way to the top. So extrude and let's position it up here. And I'm going to position it at the point where this starts to curve because this starts to curve. There's sort of this, let me grab this. There's sort of this point here where there's like a sharp point where the headstock starts, but the neck actually starts to curve a little bit lower, like down here. So we'll, we'll drag it up to there and just bring this over by dragging in Y. So G Y to drag that over. And then let's deal with the shape and size of this. So down here, I'm just going to S X to scale it in X that should be the width of the fretboard. And this actually looks a little out of kilter. Let's straighten these up a bit. There we go. And now we'll grab this up here and just extrude up to the next point and drag this over here like, like so. And here I'm just going to I'm just going to actually rotate this like this because the neck is or the headstock rather is gonna is gonna sort of project off at an angle from here and so when we extrude it I want it to extrude uh, in the correct ish direction like this so highlight these and then extrude to the end and just rotate this a little more and scale. And that's looking pretty good. Now there is a problem here, obviously, in that the headstock is not flat, uh, but we'll deal with that in a second here once we deal with the rest of this. So this, scale this here for now. Uh, we will have to change that in a second and this is looking pretty all right. So let's bring back our our subsurf modifier and shade smooth and see how we're how we're doing. Now these we might wanna we might wanna bring out a little bit more. And these we could bring could even add in another loop cut here just to give a little bit more definition in the geometry here. And it's okay to have a little more dense geometry in, in areas where you require more detail. There we go, something like that. And 
and then up here at the headstock this is obviously getting a little more narrow as well because of that because of that subsurf uh, and we'll we can solve that just by by scaling this oops, this whole thing up in the x-axis just like that and you want it to be pretty much exactly the same width as the fretboard all the way down there we go all right and actually i am going to bring back uh the loop cuts here just to hold this edge here so here yeah i brought this edge back while my camera battery was charging and the one here on the bottom and now let's uh, figure out what to do with the rest of this so with the subsurf on this is looking pretty good we'll shade is smooth but we need a we need a material so let's go ahead and make a material for this uh, i also renamed it to neck and i'm going to put it in the guitar folder uh, and i can we can delete this neck outline in a minute we probably don't need that anymore but what we're going to use for this is this mahogany material uh, and if I just apply it to this now, it's not going to look like anything because this is not UV unwrapped, but we can go ahead and apply our rotation and scale and just, just do a quick smart UV project just so we can get some, uh, some material on this. And if you don't know how to do that, you click on it, tab, A to select all, U to unwrap, and oops, smart UV project. And that's just a sort of quick and dirty way to keep your stuff unwrapped while you're while you're working, um, but usually not what you want to use for your final unwrap. Depending on the shape, uh, often you want you generally want to uh, do a, like a full manual unwrap because sometimes, like for example, down here you can see it doesn't look quite right. Sometimes it just doesn't do a perfect job, uh, but sometimes it's okay. So we'll use it here for for a minute. So this material here, let's go into the shading tab and really all this is is i have a seamless texture that i made from a picture of some mahogany that i found on the internet with a cc0 license so it's uh it's uh, so it's free to use and i will leave a link to the image in the description uh, I'll leave a link to the seamless version that I created of it in the description so that you can use it. And all I did was I, I brought it in. Where is it here? I can just so here it is here, and I'll just bring it in and plug it into a hue saturation node. So Shift A, search and look for a hue saturation node. And I set my values to 0.477 for hue. Uh, 1.15 saturation and 0.3 for value just because it didn't look quite right on import and then plugged it into the base color and i set the roughness to 0.15 and the clear coat to one and it looks you know looks pretty good it looks something like this uh, and so you may think it looks a little bit orangey uh, but that is pretty pretty okay all right so there is our neck now because i angled the neck uh, i decided to go for you know a more accurate realistic build this is, uh, you know, correct that the neck would be angled like this. So we need to angle the fretboard as well. And in order to do that, I'm going to select it and just hit R to rotate and just rotate it. And then G Y to drag it over until it looks like it's in sort of the correct position it should basically be G Y should pretty much be touching here. And then I'm just going to adjust the length of this headstock here so that it is, oops, so that it is more correct. And I'm going to put a loop cut in here uh, just to sort of sharpen up this edge here. And we'll just grab these and GZ to drag them up a little bit like that. So there should be a little bit of a flat space above there. Uh, where we will we'll, uh, add some stuff here in a minute. Now you'll notice as well that this makes, uh, makes a difference for the rest of the instrument because this, uh, this piece here, this soundboard, is no longer flush with the top. And that is actually accurate. We're going to have to 
bend the bend the top a little bit in order to meet the soundboard and that'll also require us to move the position of the the bridge and the and the bridge pins as well so i'm just going to drag those out in the y-axis a little bit and then select the guitar body go into side view and i'm just going to hide everything at the, at the side here and i'm also going to alt click these bindings here and hide those as well so that we really are just looking at the top layer here and then in order to in order to do this what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into front view here and select everything in the sound hall and then down about here to something like that and then i'm going to turn on proportional editing with o and set it to sphere get to sphere and then from the side just gy to drag it out oops gy to drag it out and we'll also need to scale this up a little bit and that's looking pretty okay all right so now the soundboard is is back where it should be we can select the bridge and the and the bridge pins and gy to just drag those back into position and if you need to rotate them just a hair to to match the soundboard that's a that's fine as well let's make a nut uh, so the nut is the piece that goes here up at the top at the end of the fretboard that the strings rest on so we're going to make uh, two things we're going to make the nut itself and we're going to make a material for it so shift a mesh cube to add in a cube and where did my cube go All right, there we go. And GZ to drag it up. And SZ to scale. SY to scale and Y and just sort of position this roughly, roughly here where it should be. And I'm just gonna make that a little bit taller than, than the fretboard. So it doesn't need to be too much taller uh, but I'm not worrying about it too much because we're going to have to change the scale of this here in a minute. So, this X. Then I'm going to control R and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And just, oops, turn off proportional editing. And SX to scale these in the X. So I'm scaling all of these loop cuts we just added. And it's going to spread them out uniformly, which is what we want here, because we want these to extend uh, uniformly close to, like around there, sort of towards the ends of the, of the nut here. Then I'm going to grab this top edge here, this entire top edge here, and just GY to drag it back in this direction a little bit. And let's add a subsurf modifier to this. And let's add some loop cuts to make this a little a little more sharp. So to this end and this end and then here and then we'll do the same thing over here. And right click it and shade smooth. And let's actually add one more here in the center and just GY and drag it out a little bit just to give that a little bit of a rounded profile. All right, so I'm going to apply the rotation and scale and then just scale this down. Just scale it down and place it here. Oops. It's SZ because we're only I only want to scale this in Z. Rotate it a little bit to match the neck angle. And this should be about 3.2 millimeters thick. So SZ scale it up to 3. So 0 0.0032 meters should be about right, and it should be as wide as the as the fretboard. There we go. And now the reason that we added six loop cuts in this and spread them out evenly is because that's going to make the string slots. So I'm just going to forward slash to isolate this object for a second, and we're just going to put a loop cut on either side of these 
loops that we had just made. So all the way down. GG to edge slide if you have to. Oops. And then from top view, I'm just going to grab each of these sections here. So I'm shift click dragging to highlight all six of these. And then G Y to just drag them inwards very slightly and that's going to give us a uh, this sort of profile here where there's a little notch for each of these each of these strings and that should be all right uh, I'm just tidying this up to make it make sure that it's the same width as the fretboard all the way down because that is important so SX just make sure that's pretty exact and I'll even add just another loop cut around the bottom here like this and another one here around this top and then I'll just sharpen up that edge that much more and there we go all right so now we need a material for this and we can make a procedural material for this as well and actually I've already made one here I called it bone so I just clicked the little plus and then new to make a new material and renamed it by double clicking to bone and then in the shading tab this is the material setup so it's very simple so it's a noise texture so you would go shift a texture noise texture uh, and then duplicate it and so we have one at a scale of 6.8 detail 15 roughness 0.5 and distortion 0 and then that is plugged into a mix RGB node so shift a search mix RGB and it's using this factor as the factor and the colors that i selected were from some image samples of bone uh, that i picked using a, a hex grid color sampler so the first one is e3d ac9 and the second one is bbb 4a6 and then i plugged those into another mix node into the color one slot and the second one down here into a hue saturation value so shift a search hue saturation value uh, and I set the hue saturation values to uh, 0.5 1 and 0.8 so what this is doing is it's making sort of a modely noisy mix uh, between these two bone colors one that's slightly lighter and one that's slightly darker just to give it a little more detail in its appearance so that it doesn't just like look like a flat white color uh, and then this is a very fine noise texture and I have the factor from this plugged into this second mix RGB node here and the hue saturation value plugged into the second color slot here so the very fine noise texture is mixing between this and a darker version of the same output just to add a little bit of sort of darkened splotches here and there all right, and so this second mix RGB node is then plugged directly into the base color and I set the roughness value at 0.3 and you can see that the uh, the result is a fairly realistic looking bone color you could maybe make it a little more yellow or a little darker or whatever but it, I think it looks looks pretty okay for our needs for now all right so let's make some uh, let's make some frets so I actually went and had a look at some fret wire sizes so that we could figure out exactly how large this should be and it is 2.13 millimeters wide and the crown will be one millimeter tall so we can we can scale this down to roughly the width of the, the width of the fretboard and then scale Z to that width of what did I say 2.13 millimeters so 0 0.00213 meters and SY to scale it in the other direction and that height is one millimeter so I'll scale it in Y until it's one millimeter tall roughly and actually I'm gonna go a little taller than that because there are a couple of different sizes here I'm gonna go 1.3 
millimeters tall. And then we're gonna we're gonna rotate this so that it matches the angle of the fretboard. And then we're gonna give it that crown profile. So I'm just gonna add a subsurf modifier to this with a single level uh, and shade smooth. And then I'm going to add a loop cut down the center. And then from the side, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this top corner here and the one here at the bottom by shift click drag and GG to edge slide and just bring it down until it looks like it has roughly that correct profile. And then we can add a loop cut here on the bottom and E to flatten it out. And then we can add a loop cut here on this end to bring this in like so. Just like that. And we can do the same thing on the other end. And maybe one more here. Drag another one here and another one on this end. There we go. And just make sure that's shaded smooth. And actually, I think I'll add another couple viewport levels. Yeah, there we go. We might as well go for very high quality. And we will have to adjust this accordingly by just dragging in the Y until it's nice and rounded like this. And we already have a metallic material for this because we made one for uh, we made one for this sort of um, this strap here at the bottom. And we'll use the same metal for these frets. So it was called what did we call it? We call it strap pin. Uh, now one thing that you'll notice is that uh, this is not matching the radius of the fretboard, so let's fix that. So add a bunch of loop cuts down the center here. Uh, I'm using an odd number just to make sure I get one in the center, just because it makes for a nicer, nicer radius. And then I'm just going to select the central loop and hit O to turn on proportional editing in sphere mode, GY to drag, and then just zoom in a little bit. And actually, I'm going to do this from the top, because that'll just... Yeah, give me a better idea of whether I'm whether I'm adjusting this too much or not. Something like that should be okay. So G Y and just drag it back into position here, and that's looking pretty good. You just want it to rest right on top, and there we go. That's pretty all right. So now onto the fret positions. Now there is actually a mathematical formula for the fret positions. Uh, I'm just gonna eyeball it here because for the purposes of a render, it doesn't, it's not gonna matter too much. Uh, this doesn't need to be exact. Obviously, if you were machining parts to make a guitar or something like that, then you would wanna be more exact. Uh, but in our case, it's, it's not gonna matter too much. So what I will do actually now, sorry, I said to rotate this, but I'm actually gonna rotate this back flat uh, so that we can lay them all out and then we'll rotate them all at once later uh, just because that'll be a little more straightforward. So I'm going to overlay our our reference image here and then start positioning this, these. So shift D, Z, and then we'll just do that the whole way up so that they're all in a straight line. Shift D and Z and shift E and Z. There we go. And now we can hide our reference image again and just select all of these, all of these frets here. There we go. And now from the side, it'll be easier to just rotate and drag and rotate. Just until we get them all in in the correct position here. And there we go. 
And now we can just go and, and scale these down until they're the same width as the fretboard. So just select one and SX to scale. And we'll do that all the way down the neck. And there we go. Some uh, some nice looking frets all the way all the way down the neck. Now one thing I will actually do here as well is just to just to ease up these um, these proximity loops here on the nut just to just round the edges off a little bit more. It just seems a little bit a little bit hard to me. Now I'm going to grab all the frets and merge them into a single layer or a single mesh. So highlight all of them, uh, control, click and drag to deselect anything in case you grab anything else by mistake and then control, oops, got to select one to make sure we have an active object and then control J to merge and that'll just put them all into a single layer. All right, so we're almost there. Uh, I've got to add uh, the headstock still which there are a couple of parts that uh, that'll go into doing that because there's the headstock and then there's also the uh, the head plate that goes over it as well as any any logos we might want to put on the on the headstock and then and then there's also inlays for the fretboard if we want to add uh, I think I'll add some some just simple traditional dot inlays to this then we'll do the side dots and the strings and then we'll be pretty much uh, ready to ready to finish up. So we'll wrap up this one here. Until next time.